everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Preeti. I am a first semester computer science and engineering student at Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Bengaluru. Today, I am here to discuss a topic that comes under Applied Physics for CSE string that is Applications of Lasers. Here are the table of contents. First, we will have a brief introduction about lasers. Then comes our actual topic, Applications of Laser. Today, we are going to deal with three major applications which includes laser cooling, barcode scanner and laser range window. So, let's start the session, lasers. Laser is an acronym that denotes light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. A laser is a device that generates high intensity light in the form of a laser beam. It has properties like coherence, unidirectional, monochromatic and focusability. Applications of lasers First, we will discuss about laser cooling. Laser cooling is a technique in atomic physics and quantum optics that can slow down and trap atomic and molecular particles. The method is based on the interaction between light and matter and it exploits the way in which photons transfer momentum to atoms. The basic principle of laser cooling is the absorption and re-emission of photons. When an atom absorbs a photon, its energy is increased and it moves to higher energy level. When it later re-emits the photon, it loses energy and falls back to lower energy level. The key to laser cooling is to ensure that the atom always re-emits the photon in a direction that is opposite to its motion. This means that on average, the atom loses more momentum to the photons than it gains and it slows down as a result. This allows atoms to be captured in optical traps. There are several different methods of laser cooling. The first one is Doppler cooling. Doppler cooling is the most common method used for cooling neutral atoms. Doppler cooling relies on the fact that the frequency of the light absorbed by an atom depends on its velocity. As an atom moves towards a laser, the frequency of the light it absorbs is shifted to higher value and as it moves away from the laser, the frequency is shifted to lower value. By using two or more lasers that are detuned from each other, it is possible to ensure that the atom always re-emits the photon in a direction that opposes its motion leading to cooling. And the second one is Sisyphus cooling. This technique is used for cooling ions which are charged particles. Sisyphus cooling relies on the interaction between the electric field of the light and the charge of the ion. When an ion moves through a laser beam, it experiences a time varying force that is proportional to the gradient of the laser intensity. By using two or more lasers that are detuned from each other, it is possible to ensure that the ion always moves uphill in the laser intensity leading to cooling. And the third method is polarization gradient cooling. Polarization gradient cooling also uses two counter-propagating laser beams. Here, the two beams have orthogonal or opposite polarization states. Some setups use circularly polarized beams, some use linearly polarized beams. In both cases, the cooling mechanism is somewhat complex based on magnetic properties, like Zeeman effect, of closely spaced electron energy states in the atoms. Bottom line, this method can cool atoms to even lower effective temperatures than the more common Doppler cooling method. But the forces involved are very weak, so the atoms have to be have to be pre-cooled or the polarization gradient cannot trap them at all. The other methods, in addition to Doppler cooling, Sisyphus cooling and the polarization gradient cooling, there are several other methods of laser cooling including sub-doppler cooling and resolved sideband cooling. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages and the choices depends on the specific requirements of the experiment. 
Now let's discuss barcode scanner. A barcode reader or barcode scanner is an optical scanner that can read printed barcodes, decode the data contained in the barcode to a computer in the form of zeros and ones. Let's look into the image in which the scanner, barcode and binary code information is written. Scanner. The scanner head shoots a laser that scans over the black and white areas of the barcode. The light is reflected back to a photoelectric reader. Barcode. Black areas of the code reflect less light back, white reflect more. The reader converts the different light levels into zeros and ones. Binary code. The binary code is sent to a computer which decodes it based on the scheme that was used to create it. Types of barcode scanner. The first one is pen type scanners or readers. Pen type readers have an inbuilt photodiode and a light source near the pen tips. To read the code, you would have to hold the pen and move its tip across all the code parts at a constant speed. From the photodiode, you can get the measure of light's intensity reflected from the source of the light as the pen tip moves from bar to bar. And the second one is laser scanner. A laser scanner can either be stationary or handheld. Unlike pen type scanner, it doesn't need to be near the barcodes to read them. With the help of lenses and mirrors, barcodes read up to maximum distance of 24 meters. Each second, a laser scanner can perform 500 scans. And the third one is slot scanner. A slot scanner stays stationary while the barcoded item is pulled physically through the slot. They are ideal for scanning barcodes on identification cards. And the next one is CCD barcode scanner. A CCD scanner does better in its read range than a pen type scanner. It is perfect for use in retail stores. CCD scanners have an inherent gun kind of interface that should remain an inch away from the barcoded item. And the last one, fifth one is image or camera scanner. An image scanner or camera reader has an inbuilt video camera that captures the barcoded images. It then works with a state of the art digital image processing technology to interpret the barcode. Even if the barcode is about 9 inches away, it can easily read it. Functions of barcode scanners Barcode scanners make code reading easy. Barcode scanners are accurate. Business can expedite inventory management through barcode scanners. And warehouse management is easier. Even the social media information can be obtained or retrieved easily through barcode scanners. Here comes our last topic, that is our third application, laser range finder. A laser range finder, also known as laser telemeter, is a range finder that uses laser beam to determine the distance to an object. The most common form of laser range finder operates on the time of flight principle by sending a laser pulse in a narrow beam towards the object and measuring the time taken by the pulse to be reflected off the target and returned to the sender. Due to high speed of light, this technique is not appropriate for high precision sub-millimeter measurements, where triangulation and other techniques are often used. It is a type of scannerless lidar. Applications of laser range finders. The first one is 3D modeling. Laser range finders are used extensively in 3D object recognition, 3D object modeling and a wide variety of computer vision related fields. This technology constitutes the heart of the so-called time of flight 3D scanners. The second application is military. Range finders provide an exact distance to targets located beyond the distance of point blank shooting to snipers and artillery. They can also be used for military reconnaissance and engineering. Usually tanks use LRF 
to correct the direct truth solution. The third application is measuring tools. Laser range windows are also used in several industries like construction, renovation and real estate as alternatives to tape measurements and was first introduced by Leica Geosystems in 1993 in France. Thank you for watching. Please do like and share the video.